Hi class, this is Coach Riza. For today, we are going to talk about vapor pressure. Vapor pressure is the pressure exerted by a vapor in equilibrium with its liquid state in a closed container. Liquid molecules at the surface escape into the gas phase. So liquid dough tends to vaporize or evaporate. So it tends to escape from their liquid state into the gas state. And this gas particles create pressure above the liquid in a closed container. So vapor pressure class can only be observed na in a closed container. Because again, if this is an open system, an open container, bukas po ito, of course, the vapor that was produced by the vaporization process is will escape sa ating uh, labas, na ating container. So, hindi natin siya ma-observe yung pressure na na-exert ng ating vapor. So, again, the vapor pressure is the pressure exerted by a vapor in equilibrium with its liquid state in a closed container. So when we say closed container, it means it is a closed system. As liquid continues to vaporize, a point is reached. For every molecule that vaporizes, one condenses. So sinasabi niya dito, in a closed system, the liquid uh, vaporizes and yung vapor na na-vaporize natin can turn back into liquid. So meron magko-condense. Kung may nag-vaporize, may magko-condense back into liquid. So, when vaporization is equals to the condensation, we have reached the equilibrium na tinatawag. So, ano po ba itong equilibrium na ito? So, as I have said, our example here is a closed container. It's a closed system. And we have here a sample liquid. Let's say it's water. So, water... Once it evaporates or vaporizes, of course, the particles of liquid will vaporize. So, may particles na mag-vaporize. May particles din na magko-condense back into liquid. So, it's a continuous process wherein may na-vaporize, may nako-condense, may na-vaporize, may nako-condense back. And when that equalizes, no, uh, when the vaporization is equal to the condensation. Tinatawag natin or nare-reach natin itong dynamic equilibrium. So, gaya nga ng example ko kanina, vapor pressure, again, it's the pressure exerted by the vapor at equilibrium in a closed container. Okay, so again, class, the vapor was produced now from our liquid. The liquid sample vaporizes or have undergone vaporization, which we can see here. It's a closed system with a liquid sample. And, of course, the particles of our liquid tends to vaporize. And as it vaporizes, meron ding nagko-condense back into liquid. So, paano ba yung condensation process? So, may area po dito na malamig. And usually nga, sa mataas na part. So, yung na-vaporize natin, yung mga vapor natin here, of course, nakakulong sila sa isang closed container. Paikot-ikot lang yan sila dito. And, once na lumamig yung vapor natin, it will automatically undergo condensation. Pag lumamig po kasi ang particles, no, yung vapor natin, ito ay nakokondense back into liquid. So, kaya naman, may nag-vaporize itong liquid na naiinitan, okay, uh, nag-vaporize, and yung particles na nalalamigan will condense back. So, when the vaporization is equal to the condensation, we achieve the equilibrium na tinatawag. And from that, we observe or we can observe the vapor pressure. So again, the pressure of a gas at equilibrium with a liquid in a closed system is known as the vapor pressure. Vapor pressure equilibrium will only be reached with sealed container or closed system and constant yung conditions natin or nakaset yung condition in a closed system. So that is our vapor pressure. So, si vapor pressure can be measured by a manometer. So, itong manometer na to is this one. It's a glass apparatus wherein we can uh, use to compare the vapor pressure to the normal atmospheric 
pressure. So, para malaman yung measurement ng vapor pressure natin, kinocompare natin siya kay atmospheric pressure. And take note class, atmospheric pressure is everywhere. So, as we all know, we have our very own atmosphere. Tayo yung planeta na may atmosphere that can sustain life. Okay, so, kaya tayo may atmosphere. It's because, again, our planet Earth has a atmosphere and it is held by our gravity. So, uh, sa ating atmosphere, may air, may presence ng oxygen, may presence ng mga gases that can sustain life. And that also have, no, this what we called atmospheric pressure. Ito yung pressure na na-exert uh, due to our air or atmosphere. Okay? So, ito ay nararamdaman. Hindi pala natin nararamdaman. Ito ay hindi natin nararamdaman, pero nasa paligid natin. We are actually under pressure because again, atmospheric pressure is everywhere. So, yun nga po yung ginagamit here to compare uh, the, uh, the measurement of vapor pressure. So, using the manometer, uh, andito yung liquid sample natin. Uh, Pinapavaporize ito, of course, with the presence of heat. Papakuluan. And then, that this will produce vapor. Okay? And through that, the vapor will push this mercury here. And ito naman po yung iaangat na height against the atmospheric pressure is the measurement ng vapor pressure. So, vapor pressure though is influenced by three factors. So, we have three factors that can uh, influence our vapor pressure. At nangunguna na nga po si intermolecular forces. Sumunod si temperature and pangatlo si pressure. So, si intermolecular forces, napakalaki yung role niya sa vapor pressure natin. Ito yung basihan kung paano nabubuo din yung vapor, yung vaporization process. So, the stronger the intermolecular forces, nare-restrict yung phase change. Yung conversion ng liquid to gas. Okay? So, kapag malakas nga naman ang intermolecular forces, mahirap mapaghiwala yung mga molecules natin. Unlike sa so weaker, uh, weaker yung attraction na mas madaling mag-phase change. So, titignan natin later on yung kay intermolecular forces, ano ba yung influence niya kay vapor pressure. Another one is temperature. Energy daw is required to phase change. So, kaya po nagkakaroon ng phase change, it's because of energy. It's either may na-add or na-remove na energy. But for our case here, vaporization, yung process ng vaporization, may nadadagdag na energy. Yung mga particles natin, nakaka-acquire ng energy. So, yun titignan natin mamaya. Kung paano ba nagkakaroon ng vaporization. Okay? So, sumanad is pressure. At tinutukoy na pressure here is the atmospheric pressure. At si pressure po na forces particles into liquid state. In short, isa siya sa factor na pumipigil sa phase change. So, pinapanatili niya, pinupush niya yung mga liquid molecules natin na manatili sa pagiging liquid state nila. So, tingnan natin, ano ba yung involvement nitong tatlong ito kay vapor pressure. So, vapor pressure is influenced by intermolecular forces. As I have said a while ago, intermolecular forces plays a vital role in the uh, vaporization process. Kapag weaker yung intermolecular forces natin, mas less yung energy needed to break the intermolecular force. So, ibig sabihin, mas madali nating mapaghihiwala yung mga molecules natin. Okay? So, it's easier for all particles to face change regardless of the temperature. So, kapag mabilis natin nabibreak si intermolecular forces, kapag weak yung attraction, mas madaling makakapag-phase change yung particles natin from liquid to vapor. So, because of that, magkakaroon ng increase sa rate ng vaporization, mag increase din yung vapor pressure. So, we have two examples. So, we have here water. Water daw is low vapor pressure. So, bakit po kaya uh, low vapor pressure ang produce ni water. First, water is a polar molecule. And the molecules of water is a polar-to-polar -polar attraction. And that attraction is also a special type of dipole-dipole, which is uh, the hydrogen bond. 
Hydrogen bond, if you could still remember, it's a type of intermolecular force and it's the strongest intermolecular force na type. So, since water has a stronger intermolecular force, mas mahirap makapag-break free sa kanilang attraction sa isa't isa. So, hindi agad-agad sila makakapag-vaporize dahil sa attraction sa isa't isa ng mga molecules natin. So, kaya low vapor pressure ang ating water kasi mabagal yung vaporization process niya. Unlike alcohol, alcohol has high vapor pressure because they easily vaporize. Bakit sila mabilis mag-vaporize? It's because they have weaker intermolecular forces than the water. So, our, so alcohol po is known for being a volatile liquid. So, they are highly volatile. So, when we say volatile or, or volatility, it is the tendency of a liquid to vaporize. And alcohol is known for that. They are they can easily vaporize the molecules no, of our alcohol can easily break free from their intermolecular forces and vaporize into gas so that is why the relationship of vapor pressure and intermolecular forces is this if the stronger the stronger the intermolecular forces the harder it is uh, for it to face change the lower the vapor pressure. If it's weaker intermolecular force, the weaker the intermolecular forces, the higher the vapor pressure because it easily vaporizes. Because they have weak intermolecular forces, they can easily break the attraction and can easily transform or have a phase change from liquid to gas. So that is the uh, influence of intermolecular force to our vapor pressure. Next is vapor pressure is influenced by temperature. As I have said a while ago, temperature also plays a vital role in this vaporization process. So temperature in the form of heat or energy is needed to have this what we call phase change. So if there is an increase in temperature, increases the kinetic energy of all particles. If you could still remember class, the particles of matter are in constant motion based from our kinetic molecular theory. So all particles of matter, whether it be solid, liquid, or gas, have their own energy. They can move. They have their own energy. That's why they can move. But it's not enough to break their intermolecular force. But if there is a presence of another source of energy, our particles can acquire that energy. Because of the presence of heat or energy, the increase in temperature can make the particles more energetic. They increase yung energy nila. And because they have more energy, the increasing number of particles with energy can break the intermolecular forces. So it will be easier for them to break the intermolecular forces because they have energy. And because of that, there will be an increase on the rate of the vaporization and of course increasing the vapor pressure. Of course, the opposite, when cooling, when it's cold, the energy is lost. The energy is removed. So kapag malamig, nawawala yung energy ng mga particles natin. Okay, humihina sila. Okay, humihina yung energy nila. That is why, humihina din ang pagalaw or mabagal yung pagalaw nila. So, of course, results to a low vapor pressure. So, hindi agad-agad sila or hindi na sila makakapag-vaporize because of the temperature. It's colder, lesser energy, so less movement, they cannot break the intermolecular force. Unlike if it's warm, if it's hot, there's the presence of energy coming from the heat na acquire yan ng particles and the particles will soon evaporate or vaporize into vapor. So the relationship of the vapor pressure to temperature is that when it's cold, when the temperature is lower, there is also low vapor pressure because the particle doesn't have enough energy to break their intermolecular force. When it's warm, there is an increase in temperature, it has a high vapor pressure. Because again, the particles gain energy from our heat source 
and because of that they can easily break their intermolecular forces and they can eventually phase change from liquid to gas. So that is the influence of temperature to our vapor pressure. So just to recap, as I have said, vapor pressure increases with the increasing temperature. So how does it happen? It occurs because as the liquid gains kinetic energy, the molecules can overcome the intermolecular forces of attraction that are prevalent in the liquid phase. Thus, the liquid can convert into gas. Next is the vapor pressure is influenced by pressure. And the pressure here that we're talking about is the atmospheric pressure. So pressure po again, the atmospheric pressure is present everywhere. In an open area, there is air pressure or the atmospheric pressure. And this pressure actually hinders the vaporization. Isa siya sa mga nagre-restrict, pumipigil sa mga particles of liquid to vaporize. So, if there is an increase in pressure, the more added force yung nagre-restrict sa particles to move. So, may nagre-restrict sa ating liquid to vaporize. So, it's harder for all the particles to face change regardless of the temperature. It's because, again, something is pushing them uh, to remain under liquid state. So, and because of that, no, dahil uh, increased yung pressure, may nagre-restrict sa liquid to vaporize, and the decrease yung rate of vaporization. So, decreasing vapor pressure. Like what I have said, it's an open system, and an open system must contend with the atmospheric pressure. Since open tong container natin, uh, yung air molecules collides and push on the water surface, okay, on the liquid, making vaporization more difficult. Meron pa rin naman nakakatakas, no? Kapag ka yung liquid natin, liquid particles are energized or has an energy or enough energy to break the intermolecular force, meron pa rin namang nakakapag-vaporize. Pero hindi uh, siya ganun kabilis gaya ng nasa closed system. Kapag closed yung system, walang presence ng atmospheric pressure kasi closed nga yung system natin. So, for an example, we have a cooking can. Ito nga, cooking can. Yung liquid natin there, the coke, di ba, yung beverage na coke, the liquid vaporizes. Kaya po, pag binubuksan natin yung cooking can, may pressure sa loob. Yun po yung tinatawag na vapor pressure. Yun yung naipo na pressure na nag-vaporize no, sa loob ng ating can. Unlike sa open system, no, um, mabagal yung pag-vaporize kasi nga may nag-restrict which is the air pressure. So, konti lang or paunti-unti yung na-vaporize. Okay? So, kapag ka may increase ng pressure, nade-decrease si vapor pressure. Pero pag lesser yung pressure, may increase si vapor pressure. So, that's how pressure or atmospheric pressure influence our vapor pressure. Now, let's move on to evaporation. So, palagi natin siyang narinig kanina pa. Kasi nga, the phase change of liquid to gas undergoes vaporization or evaporation. So, vaporiz uh, vaporization so vaporization is the conversion of liquid to a gas or vapor. While evaporation is a transition from a liquid to a gas below a substance boiling point. Parehas lang naman yung uh, definition nila. Parehas nilang sinasabi that it's the conversion or transition or the phase change of liquid to gas. But for evaporation, no, sinasabi niya dito that a liquid can actually evaporate even hindi pa niya even below a substance boiling point. So, our liquid, even at room temperature, can actually evaporate. Okay? Hindi na kailangan ma-reach si boiling point para mag-evaporate yung liquid natin. Kahit tubig man yan, water man yan, at room temperature, the particles of liquid can actually evaporate. Okay? So, hindi man natin na-reach pa si boiling point, Kapag nagpapakulo tayo ng water, napapansin natin, right? Hindi pa naman kumukulo, pero may usok na tayo nakikita. It's because, again, the water can actually evaporate. So, paano yung nangyayari? 
Some of the liquid particles have enough kinetic energy to overcome the forces of attraction around them and escape into the gas phase. So because of that, no, with the presence of our heat turned energy, the particles acquired that, once they have enough energy, they can actually uh, vaporize. They can actually uh, phase change from liquid to gas. Because they have energy, no overcome nila the intermolecular forces. And that is why they can evaporate or vaporize. Okay? So that is evaporation. So again, evaporation occurs when molecules of the liquid surface are moving fast enough to escape into the gas phase. Also called as vaporization. So, paano nga nangyari yun? Requires energy to overcome intermolecular forces between the molecules of the liquid. So, kaya sila nakaka-break free. Kaya sila nakaka-escape from liquid state to gas state. It's because, again, they uh, overcome the intermolecular forces kapag ka na-energize sila. Okay? So, that is our evaporation. So, now let's move on to another uh, property of liquid boiling or boiling point so boiling is an endothermic process it's a rapid vaporization of liquid so kapag nagbo-boiling po na mabilis ang vaporization na marami na produce na vapor marami na convert na liquid into gas that is why it's a rapid vaporization of liquid how does it happen it's because we have energized particles so the energized particles you know, the particles of our liquid near the heat source spread out forming bubbles and those bubbles rise and enter the atmosphere okay so the si boiling point na reach po yan kapag yung vapor pressure produced equals to the air pressure so yung increased vaporization at the surface pushes against the air particles Take note class, diba, we have this what we call atmospheric pressure. Yun yung pumipigil sa mga molecules of water to phase change. Pero dahil nare-reach natin yung boiling point natin, no, during boiling, napapabilis yung vaporization. Okay, rapid vaporization. Maraming vapor na napaproduce. So, may presence ng vapor pressure. At kapag yun nga, uh, nag-equalize to the air pressure na push na na ngayon or na-overcome niya na ngayon yung atmospheric pressure natin. Making it easier for vapor to form inside the liquid state. So, yung bubbles na yon na nakikita natin during boiling, it's actually the vapor. Yung na-vaporize na na liquid. At umaangat nga ito na kumukulo kapag kumukulo. Ang basehan natin, pag kumukulo ang tubig, or kumukulo yung liquid natin is kapag may bubbles or bula. Okay, kumukulo na siya. So, that is our boiling or boiling point. So, boiling point and intermolecular force. So, ano po mga relationship na itong dalawang ito? So, weaker intermolecular forces daw, lessing energy needed to break free. So, kaya na sabi ko kanina kay vapor pressure, kapag weak yung intermolecular forces, mas madali siyang nag-vaporize. Mas madali lang kapag break free, less energy lang yung kailangan mo. So, there will be an increase in the vaporization. Okay? So, increased vaporization pushes against the atmospheric pressure and easier for internal vapor to form. So, of course, dahil mabilis itong nakakapag-vaporize, mas lower yung boiling point natin or yung temperature. Ibig sabihin, mas mabilis niya kasing nare-reach yung boiling point niya. So, mas lower yung temperature. Kapag stronger naman yung intermolecular forces, mas higher yung boiling point. Kasi nga po, matagal mag-vaporize. It takes time. So, bago niya ma-heat yung boiling point, okay, nung from tweet, yung temperature ng liquid natin. So, the stronger the intermolecular forces, the higher the temperature. The weaker the intermolecular forces, the lower the temperature. So, as you can see here in this illustration, uh, kapag yung liquid sample natin, let's say we have here water. Let's say water yung liquid dito. At 80 degrees, hindi magbo-boil ang tubig natin kasi 100 degrees Celsius ang boiling point niya. Yes, may mag-vaporize pero hindi pa siya boiling dahil nga again, water has a stronger intermolecular force. Well, on this part, may weaker intermolecular forces here. It's another liquid. 
Okay, so meron tayong liquid here at boiling point niya is 80 degrees Celsius. So at 80 degrees, nagbo-boil na siya, na-reach na na si boiling point. It's because again, it has weaker intermolecular forces than this water sample here. So, that is the relationship of our boiling point and intermolecular force. And each liquid, each type of liquid has different boiling points. So, meron na pong standard or set boiling points for each liquid. So, gaya nga po na nakikita nyo here, uh, these are some of the few uh, liquid samples. So, we have here acetone, nail polish remover, alcohol, water, olive oil. So, kita naman natin the differences of their uh, boiling points. So, here is lower, here is higher. Again, if it's lower, it's because, again, they have uh, weaker intermolecular forces. If the boiling point is higher, like water and olive oil, it's because, again, they have stronger intermolecular forces. So, ang tatanal lang po natin sa relationship between the intermolecular force and the boiling point ay eto. So, the stronger the intermolecular forces, the higher the boiling point. Bakit mataas ang boiling point or temperatura? It's because, again, stronger intermolecular forces need more energy to break the forces of attraction. At dahil dyan, mas mabagal yung vaporization. So, low vapor pressure siya. While weaker intermolecular forces has low boiling point. Low boiling point, it's because less yung energy needed to break this weak intermolecular forces. So, dahil weak siya, madali siyang mabreak, mabilis yung vaporization. That is why, magkakaroon to ng high vapor pressure. So, that is the relationship between the intermolecular forces and the boiling point. Boiling point and atmospheric pressure. So, tingnan naman natin yung relationship between these two. So, again, as I have said, atmospheric pressure is present everywhere. So, it can also affect no, the boiling point. So, sabi niya dito, any change in air pressure will produce a change in the boiling point. So, nababago pala yung boiling point natin, yung temperaturang pwedeng makuha at that point dahil sa pressure natin. Okay? So, air pressure po natin kasi class is concentrated here sa first layer na atmosphere natin, malapit sa kalupaan, okay, malapit sa geosphere natin. Dito, mas concentrated yung air. Habang tumataas ang tumataas ka sa layer na atmosphere, panipis ng panipis yung hangin or air. So, ibig sabihin, pagpataas ka ng pataas, mas less yung atmospheric pressure. Pag nandito ka naman sa mababang lugar, sa pinaka at sea level, no, sa ating kalupaan, uh, the atmospheric pressure is higher. Okay, so ibig sabihin involves the altitude. Pag pataas ka ng pataas, bumababa ang, ang atmospheric pressure. Pag mababa, nasa mababa kang lugar, mataas ang atmospheric pressure. Okay, so anong connect neto kay boiling point? Again, ito na nga po. The less atmospheric pressure, less yung force na nagpo-push on the surface. Diba, sabi ko po kanina, si atmospheric pressure, siya yung pumipigil sa mga liquid particles to vaporize. Dahil lesser si atmospheric pressure, edi less din yung pumipigil sa mga liquid particles natin. And because of that, it's easier for surface vapor to equalize the vapor pressure. Mas mabilis nakakapag-vaporize kapag less yung atmospheric pressure. So, less energy needed for internal vaporization. That is why, kapag less yung atmospheric pressure, lower yung boiling point. Ibig sabihin, mas mabilis nating maa-achieve yung boiling point natin at a lower temperature. So, gaya nga neto. Let's say we have this example. Let's say, ito yung tubig pinapakuluan natin. Dahil high pressure dito at sea level sa kalupaan, Okay? At 80 degrees na sinet natin, hindi siya magbo-boil. Kasi, high pressure po, no? Dito. Hindi siya agad-agad magbo-boil at 80 degrees. So, ma-achieve lang niya at 100 degree Celsius. Well, if umangat tayo ng konti, umakit tayo sa bundok, sa medyo mataas na lugar, bababa po ang low 
ang air pressure natin. Low air pressure po sa matataas na lugar. So, ibig sabihin, bababa din yung temperatura na magiging boiling point natin. So, possible yon at 80 degrees, pwede na siyang mag-boil. So, gaya nga na sabi ko kanina, na the boiling points can change with the pressure changes. So, less pressure, lower boiling point. Example nga yan pag umakit tayo sa Mount Everest. Pag nagpakulo ka daw ng tubig sa Mount Everest, 76 degrees Celsius ang makukuha mo. So, ibig sabihin at 76 degrees Celsius pa lang, magbo-boil na agad ang tubig. Bakit? It's because again, less yung pressure. Less yung pumipigil sa kanya na mag-convert or mag-phase change. So, mabilis siyang nag-vaporize. Unlike sa kapag nasa mababa kang lugar, ang standard natin is 100 degrees Celsius sa tubig. So, at sa dito sa mababang lugar, sa kalupaan, ayan, sa sea level, ang ating boiling point for water is 100 degrees Celsius. It's because higher yung pressure dito sa mababa ang lugar or at sea level, mas mataas yung pressure natin. That is why mas Uh, mataas din yung boiling point natin. So, gaya na sabi ko kanina, atmospheric pressure decreases with altitude. So, habang tumataas tayo, nagiging less yung atmospheric pressure. So, kapag less yung pressure, less yung energy needed to vaporize. So, it boils, no? the vapor bubbles is formed at lower temperature, magboboil na siya kapag ka nasa mataas na lugar. Habang tumataas, lalong nababawasan yung concentration ng air, air particles natin. Lalo na sa outer space, wala na pong atmospheric pressure doon. Okay? So, yun nga, sa exosphere, no, yung pinaka-final layer, halos space-like na siya, sobrang nipis na lang ng air present doon. So, ibig sabihin, pag nasa mataas ka na lugar, mas bumababa yung boiling point. Dahil nga, less yung pressure. Kaya naman, Uh, mas matagal magluto sa matataas na lugar. It's because, again, the water isn't as hot when it boils. So, kaya sabi ko sa inyo, sa outer space, wala na ang atmospheric pressure. Wala na tayong atmosphere doon. Since wala tayong atmosphere sa space, wala tayong pressure. At dahil walang pressure na pumipigil sa mga liquids no, to vaporize, ang tendency kapag ka ang tao ay napadpad sa outer space without any special suit like yung suot ng mga ast astronaut natin, deads ka talaga. So, madadeads ka. It's because, again, it, uh, the liquid, the body liquids na meron tayo will eventually vaporize. It will boil. It will reach its, its boiling point And it will lead us to our death. That is the relationship between the boiling point and our atmospheric pressure. So, again, pag sea level, yung boiling point, 100 degrees Celsius sa water. Pag nasa Mount Everest ka, nasa 70 degree Celsius. Kasi, again, mas lesser ang pressure sa matataas na lugar at mas higher yung pressure pag nasa mabababang lugar. Okay? So, that is our boiling point.